In episode 2.4, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to create lists. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use them. I'm gonna be showing you guys where to use them. And I'm gonna show you some other safety precautions as well. Hello guys, it is Cryptograns here. I hope everyone's doing well today. Welcome back to another Unity Idle Game tutorial video. This is episode 2.4 and today we're gonna to be discussing lists. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like below, subscribe to my channel if you're new and turn on the bell for future notifications of videos and live streams. Anyways, let's discuss lists. So once again, just like the previous arrays video, this is purely for demonstration. None of the lists here that I'm going to make are gonna be included in the actual game. This is purely for demonstration. So if you wanna follow along, do the same code as me, go ahead so you can understand as well. But just know that none of it is gonna be part of the real game. Just thought I would throw that disclaimer out. But as I explained in the last video, lists are very similar to arrays, but however, their use case is very different. So lists can be easily expanded, they can be easily added, they can be removed easily, a list is just an expandable array with different types of features. There's a lot of things you can do with lists as well. But basically as you, as a beginner, you just need to know that they are an object and it's just an array, but you, you could do more things with them. So to create a list here, I'm gonna be in my controller script just to be doing this. We need to import something at the top here. So right now we have these four here. We need to import a namespace called system.collections.generic. So this will give us access to lists because this is exactly where they come from. So now in order to make our list, we just gotta type in the keyword list like here. And you can see that now this is not gray anymore because lists come from the generic namespace inside collections, which is inside system. So now you'll see that it's laid out like this. So what goes inside here? Well, this is the type of the list that we're gonna make. Just like we did for arrays, I'm gonna do the same thing, but for big doubles, just for example. So we put our big double in here. You can put string, int, you can, heck, you can even put TMP text in here. You can put any form of object or variable type in here. But I'm gonna be doing big doubles just for this example. So now we're gonna put our variable name here, and we're gonna be doing something like this later on in the series. So I'm just gonna call this upgrade levels, just for an example. So we have our list here. This is all we need to do to declare the variable, which is pretty easy. So now in the start method, what we can do here is do upgrade levels equals new. So we're using the new term here, just like we did for data here. So new list, and we're basically doing the exact same thing here. So now what is this doing right here? Well, this is creating a brand new big double list. So where do we initialize the size, just like we did for arrays? Well, we actually put this in here. This is the capacity slot and you can leave it empty. This will be just an empty list. So I'm just gonna make this a size two list. So right now it's just two. So now we're gonna iterate through this entire list here. So I'm gonna use a normal for loop. So we start at zero, we create a variable called i, it's a temporary one inside this for loop here. And basically we want it to not pass upgrade levels dot count. So instead of length, it's count. So semicolon, and then we're gonna add i by one. I'm not really sure what happened there. So now what I'm gonna print here is I'm gonna print out i plus space plus, and then whatever is in here, upgrade levels at index i. So accessing and changing variables inside this list is exactly the same. So just be aware of that. So now when we run this, we should see zero and one. And this is empty, so this should just be zero space zero, one space zero. I'll show you in the console. Okay, so we actually ran into an issue here. So I added this line here, uh, upgrade levels dot count, and it's printing zero. Hmm, this is a bit strange, it's a bit awkward. It should be creating a size two list that's just completely empty. Well, that's not the case. It's just creating a, a completely empty list with no values inside of it, even though it's supposed to be two. So I am not completely sure why this happens yet. I've This is just a common issue, I guess. I'm not sure if it's just something related to how lists are created or if it's something related to um, building your game or, comp or for when it compiles or something like that. But all I know is that this does not work, okay? So we're actually gonna have to create our own method to replace this. But before we do that, I wanna show that we can simply just add two slots in here by ourselves. We can add two values. So what we can just do is do upgrade levels dot add, and then just put in a number here. So I'm just gonna add 10 and then upgrade levels dot add, and then for example, 42, just for an example. So now this should be size two, 
and it should print 10 and 42. Cool, so now this says two, we have 0, 10, 142. Perfect, so now we know that we can add to the list and we can access them and we can even change them too. So I'm actually gonna change this 42 here. So at index one, this is zero right here, this is one. And I'm gonna change that to actually 41. So now when we print, there you go, now it says 41. So another thing about lists is that you can actually remove the last value here. So all you gotta do is upgrade levels dot remove. So now we have a red thing right here. Remove works like this. So we have an item here. So we basically wanna remove a specific item. So here, I'm actually gonna add back this 42 and we're gonna remove the 42 here. So this is the item here. We're gonna look for 42 and we're gonna remove it. So now what we should see here is just 10 because we removed this 42 after we created it. See, there you go. Okay, so we learned how to add and remove. Now, another thing we can do with this is that we can actually initialize this list with some values here. So let's get rid of this two capacity here and add some curly braces in here. And we can actually delete these parentheses here. So let's add some values. So 400, 200, 92, just for some random numbers here. Now this is the exact same thing as creating an array here. So now we should see five numbers, actually four because we removed one of them here. So we should see 400, 200, 92, and then 10. Sweet, so yeah, we see 400, 200, 92, and 10. So let's actually go back a step and let's fix this issue here because this is gonna be kind of crucial when it comes to creating new lists. And again, I have absolutely no clue on why this happens. It's just like it's stuck at a zero capacity or something like that. I have no idea why this occurs. But for now in this video, we're just gonna create a method. You guys can create this now if you want, but I'm gonna recreate it in a future script in a future episode because not everyone is probably gonna be copying all this down. Probably not everyone's gonna be watching the list video maybe because they already know what lists are. So again, we will add it back later on. So just a heads up. Okay, so now to create this method, it's gonna be a public list T. So T is a generic here. So T basically just represents any object we throw in. So for example, big double, TMP text, data, int, string, example, the list can go on. T basically represents all of those. So now we're gonna do create list. You, know, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm just gonna call it create list since we already know what it is. And now we need to throw in our capacity. So it's kind of like this here. We're doing the, pretty much the same thing, except we're just renaming it to create list, kinda. So now we're just gonna create a variable called int capacity. So this will be our parameter. And in here, we are going to create a special kind of list. We're gonna be creating an I enumerable which is basically a special type of list. Basically it's read only and it doesn't have add or remove support. So it's good for sorting or reading big chunks of data. Now the thing is that list actually implements I enumerable. So basically that means that lists come from I enumerable. So some of list functionalities come from I enumerable. So basically you can say that list is a modified I enumerable. I don't expect you guys to know what I enumerables are. That really isn't that important. And if you wanna do any more research on the one line I'm about to write here, you can go ahead. I'm sure you can find some of this stuff on forms or you can find it on the C Sharp docs. Anyways, what we're gonna do here is enumerable, okay? And then we're gonna do dot repeat. And then in here, we're gonna use the key term default T. So basically in this repeat here, we are creating a default new object of T. So basically we're creating the default version of this T here, which would be big double. And the default of big double is just zero. Now. We don't know that because T can be anything. It could be a text again, it could be an int, it could be a string. So like the default of a string is just an empty string. So now in here, we put capacity. So now this repeat, it basically does this every time and it just adds to an empty I enumerable. And now we're gonna eventually convert this to list. Okay, cool. So now we have a list and it should be the same size as what we've given it. And we also need to return it and this can be converted to an expression body. So it looks very clean like that. 
Cool. I know some of this stuff may not make sense. It's perfectly okay if you don't understand it. In all honesty, I'm not very clear with it as well. But all we need to know is that this works. <laughs> this solves our issue here. So now anyways, we can simply just replace this with create list in here. We can get rid of this new as well because we're not creating anything new. We're just simply calling a method that returns a list. So we do create list, the type big double and a capacity of two. So now if we get rid of these here, we should now see zero, zero, one, zero. It should just be a size two list. And voila, it works. Okay, so now we have finally created our list. They work, they're beautiful, and we're all good to go. When do we actually use these? Why don't we use arrays? Well, the thing is that for our data, we're gonna be storing our levels, our just anything where we have multiple of something. Again, levels is a great example for this. Or maybe you have 10 XP bars and you wanna store every single one of those XP values or each of their levels and stuff like that in different lists. So eventually we're gonna create methods that will be able to expand these lists safely and most efficiently. And now this is very important because when we have our save data, we can't just simply modify this number here in our data constructor. Let me pull that up. We can't just modify it in here because the object's already created. When we load our data, it knows that whatever list we have here, again, let me just copy and paste this into our data for a good example here. So for example, let's just say we have our upgrade level. It is a size two list. Okay, so now we have our save and load system going. Okay, one update later. Okay, you know what? I decide, I just wanna add another upgrade. Let's just change this to three. It doesn't work that way because when we load our data, and I'm gonna be showing you guys this in the future. I know I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but I just wanna know you guys, this is really important. But when we load our data, it's gonna load upgrade levels as a size two list it is not gonna check for this. So initially it's gonna be a size three list, but once we load our data in, upgrade levels already exist just as a size two list, not three. So then this causes some problems. So what we're just gonna have to do in a future episode is check to see if our imported list is less than a given size we want it to be. If it is, then we're just simply just gonna add onto it like we did earlier here. We just added to our upgrade levels here. It's just gonna add an empty value. So now this is all really cool stuff and I promise we will get to this and I'm gonna clarify more of this once we get there. So anyways guys, I know this was a really complex episode. I really am sorry if you guys were a little stuck here. If you have any questions, please throw them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them as soon as I can. If I need to make another video on this topic, clarifying some things, I will be sure to do that. Otherwise, if you learned something new, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the like button as it supports my channel and it makes my videos show up to more people. Subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content and if you're new around here and turn on the bell for future notifications of videos and live streams. Want to support Crypto Grounds? Well, click that join button below or check out the Patreon in the link in the description below. If you want to come talk to me in the community, make sure you check out the Discord. It's also in the description below. Anyways, I hope you guys all have a fabulous day or night. I will catch you guys in the next one, which will be episode 2.5. And yes, finally, we're gonna be messing with lists and arrays by adding more upgrades. Thank you guys very much for being here today. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>